In this video, I will guide you through the first part that you must read when you receive an academic research article. When you get a paper, what should you read? I will say that rather than jumping to the results or methods directly, you have to have a basic understanding of the research. What questions are the researchers trying to trying to answer? What is the aim of the, re of the research? And more specifically, what is the research hypothesis? So, in the abstract or in the introduction section of an academic research paper, very often or always, you will find that there are these three pieces of information. The first one is the research objective. What is an objective? The objective may be very, very, very clear or very plain. Maybe you want to evaluate something, you want to investigate a phenomenon, or you want to prove something. That is the objective. Then you may see a research question. The research question is also very direct. The researcher may ask something. Very often, if you see a sentence that ends with a question mark, that is the research question. But what is an, a research hypothesis? What is a hypothesis? It's very simple. A hypothesis is a statement that tells you the relationship between two variables. To put it in more simple terms, a, a research hypothesis is a sentence that tells you how two things are related. Are they related? And there are two sides of the hypothesis. The first one, we call it null hypothesis. In some papers, the null hypothesis is abbreviated as H0. Null hypothesis. In the null hypothesis, there is no statistical significance between the two variables. For example, if I have two variables, A and B, in the null hypothesis, I can say that A and B, they are equal or more accurately, they are not statistically different or they are not significantly different. On the other hand, we have the alternative hypothesis. Sometimes the alternative hypothesis is called research hypothesis. The abbreviation of alternative hypothesis is H1. That is fairly obvious that H0 and H1 are two different things. If I have two variables, A and B, in the, in the alternative hypothesis, I can say that A and B, they are different. Or more accurately, they are statistically different or they are significantly different. Or I can say that the difference between A and B is statistically significant. So the word significant is very important. Now, let's go to this part. Here, I propose two, or I make up two, research objective. But you can say that um, the subordinate sentence of the research objective is actually a hypothesis. 
a research hypothesis. For example, the first one, fern A survives better than fern B during water stress. Obviously, the researcher wants to conduct a research by simulating a water stress condition. How to do it? He or she may irrigate less water than usual. Then, he or she select two plants or two fern species, namely A and B. And you see this word, survive. The researcher wants to test which species survives when there is less than normal irrigation or there is water stress. The researcher, having done some background research, have in, has, has in mind an idea. Fern A can survive better than fern B during water stress, meaning that fern A is more drought tolerant than fern B. So this statement tells you the relationship between A and B. Just like here, A, B, A, B. The researcher may conduct some planting experiment to disapprove H0 or to reject H0. While rejecting this one, the researcher will arrive at the conclusion that A is not equal to B. So what is A and what is B? A is the survival of fern A, B is the survival of fern B. It is that simple. Fern A is better than fern B in terms of drought tolerance. That is the, um, the target or the um, condition that the researcher wants to uh, achieve. And the other one, verify that species X can achieve a 100% coverage on green wall. In this research, it is about green wall. A green wall is a wall or a vertical surface that on which plants climb or plants are grown. Then when a certain species, perhaps, species X is planted, then the original surface of the wall would be hidden. Why? Because a hundred percent of the wall surface area will be covered In the null hypothesis, I may say that X subscript C, which is the coverage of species X, is 100%. But in the alternative hypothesis, I may say that X and its coverage is not 100%. That is simple. Why? Because species X, I want to, or the researcher wants to um, find out that whether it can cover fully the, the wall. And for the, for the alternative hypothesis, there could be statistically, dif statistically significant different difference between the 100% coverage and the actual coverage by species X. So the researcher may st uh, still uh, going to do some planting experiment, but 
he may have to take photographs continuously to assess the coverage of species X. Next, there is a, an example I want you to find where the research objective is or the aim of this research. I give you some seconds. I believe you have found it. It is here. Can you see uh, there is a word aimed? Whenever this verb appears, it is a hint. This hint will tell you okay, the researcher is going to state the objective of the research. So pay attention. And now the objective is to examine the effect of an IGRO. What is IGRO? It is intensive green roof on the roof level microclimate by comparing temperature and radiation parameters against a reference bare roof in subtropical winter. It is very uh, obvious. The setting of this research is in subtropical climate. And what is the season? Winter. So imagine it is a cold season in the subtropical area. And then there are two research uh, locations. The first one is the green roof, the intensive green roof. And the second one is the bare roof. Why is it called reference bare roof? Because a reference is a thing used for comparison. The, re the researcher wants to compare the temperature and radiation parameters between green roof and bare roof. Temperature, hot or cold. Radiation, the energy from the sun. So, you in this research objective, you can get a clue of the research hypothesis. So in the last slide, you see that here I include a picture. Can you see the tip of the iceberg? It is explicit. It is um, exposed. It is above the water surface, so you can see it clearly. Some researchers like um, writing their research hypothesis in an explicit way. Why? Because they want to show the readers very, very clearly uh, what their research is about. They write it so clearly that um, the hypothesis is just like this, just like here. But, but, remember, a lot of researchers do not like to state things so explicitly. Very often, they want to hide their research objective by making, making it implicit. The word implicit means, means that um, it is hidden. It cannot be seen easily. It is invisible. But, as I suggested, in the research objective, you can find it. You can find the clues to the research hypothesis, like here. Remember, I've just said bare roof and green roof. So, um, we, can, we can make things more explicit. We can find the now hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. On the two sides of the equal sign, I can write down bare roof, BR. B is for bare and R is for roof. And then on the other side, I can write down GR. G for green, R for roof, green roof. So for the alternative hypothesis, I will do something similar. BR versus 
GR. But you can see that the sign changes from equal to not equal to. That is a simple or the beginning step that uh, you can understand how to transform an implicit research hypothesis to an explicit one. And then, I do not just say that BR equals GR. I have to say that what of bare roof equals to what on green roof. It is very clear here, temperature, radiation. Maybe I can say that the temperature on bare roof is equal to the temperature on green roof. The temperature on bare roof is not equal to the temperature on green roof for the alternative hypothesis. Is that clear? And then, uh, after this research aim, we can also see something. The researchers use statistical analysis to assess the temperature behavior with respect to roof type weather scenarios and time of the day. Roof type is very clear. Bare roof and green roof. But for weather scenarios, hmm, what is it? It's, uh, it is uh, not so hard to understand. Weather. Sunny weather, cloudy weather or rainy weather. Um, let's say for example, sunny weather and cloudy weather. And then we also have time of the day. What is the time of the day? Also very simple. Daytime and is opposite nighttime. So who says that the two sides of the equal sign can only contain words like bare roof or, or green roof. Other than bare roof and green roof, we can use other uh, parameters like weather and time. For example, day, night. We can put it this way. The null hypothesis will state that Temperature during daytime is not different from the temperature during nighttime. Not different means statistically insignificant. Meanwhile, the alternative hypothesis will state that daytime temperature is not equal or is statistically different from the nighttime temperature. And then this whole set of hypotheses, may be tested on different conditions. This set of hypotheses will be tested on bare roof and green roof. So there are two statistical analysis, one for bare roof and one for green roof. But you may ask a question, how about weather scenario? Yes, you asked the right question. On bare roof, there is sunny and cloudy weather. On green roof, as they face the same weather, on green roof, there is also sunny and cloudy weather. So there are, in fact, four hypotheses like this, T day equals T night. One in BR 
uh, or, or one in bare roof sunny condition, the second one in bare roof cloudy condition, the third one green roof sunny condition, and the fourth green roof cloudy condition. You have to do four tests, four tests based on this hypothesis because there are different conditions uh, in the context of this research. See, research hypothesis is actually a way for you to lay out your study. There can be more than one set of hypotheses in one research paper. There could be two, there could be three. As soon as you know how to um, how to how to create or how to write the hypothesis, then you will know when you should do a test to accept or reject the hypothesis. Let's try another one. So we can find the research objective first. I will give you a few seconds. So quite clear, it's here right at the beginning to evaluate the impact of the installation of different green roof solutions on urban heat island phenomenon through a comparison of the thermal behavior of the three green plots and a reference bituminous flat roof. Once again, you see green roof and flat roof. So it is again bare roof versus green roof. But pay attention, um, is there only one type of green roof? I don't think so, because here it says free green plots, free. So the research hypothesis will get a little bit more complicated because we do not just compare bare roof versus green roof. There are three types of green roofs here. And what do we want to compare is that um, their thermal behavior. What is, th what is thermal behavior? Simple. Temperature. Is it hot? Is it cold? In simple sentence, we can say that um, the hypothesis is that green roof is cooler than bare roof. Green roof is cooler than bare roof. But in scientific research, we want to make things more accurate, more precise. So we do not just say it um, so casually, so um, ordinarily. So this time, the now hypothesis may be like this. We still want to compare bare roof and green roof, bare roof and green roof. We still want to compare the um, thermal behavior. So the thermal behavior is expressed as temperature, T. But is it that simple? I don't think so. Because we have three green plots three different types of green roofs. Is each of them cooler than the bare roof? That is the interest of the researcher. So this whole set of uh, research hypothesis may be tested for each combination like this. We have to extend the research hypothesis, both the null and the alternative hypothesis, because there are three types of green roofs, one, two, and three. Here also, one, two, and three. 
So the hypothesis gets very complicated. Uh, the bare roof or the temperature on bare roof is equal to those on green roof 1, green roof 2, and green roof 3. And the uh, opposite side is like this. But sometimes you may face a special condition like this. Let's say the temperature of bare roof and the temperature of green roof one is equal or not statistically not statistically significantly different. But you may face another condition maybe like this. The remaining two green roofs, they are not uh, statistically uh, I mean, they are statistically dif uh, different from bare roof. So you have to be very careful when you write your research hypothesis. What are you going to test? Do you want to compare each green roof to the bare roof? Or you want to just compare the um, mitigation? of urban heat island effect by the three green roofs. That is um, that is um, quite hard to solve, I would say. But uh, in this slide, I've shown you how to convert an implicit research an implicit research hypothesis into an explicit one. You can also Right is now hypothesis and alternative hypothesis. Mm. So, what must you read at first? You should find the research aim, just like what I have done here. I highlight the research aim and then I detect the variables. It's very simple thermal behavior, thermal, heat. So it must be temperature. And then I will translate the implicit research hypothesis into an explicit one. I will write things like this, BR, GR, are they equal, something like that. Sometimes I may write a whole sentence saying that mm, the null hypothesis is, say, is stating that the temperature on green roof and bare roofs are statistically insignificantly different. And the alternative hypothesis is that the temperature of bare roof and green roof are statistically significantly different. So statistics is very important, but um, if you do not have a clear target or a clear goal, which is the hypothesis, because a hypothesis is something that you can test, you can verify, you can accept or reject or approve or disapprove. If you do not have a statement like this or a, or a clear aim, then no matter how much statistical knowledge you have, those knowledge will be useless because your aim is not clear. And then uh, it is a good exercise to turn your research question into a workable hypothesis. Uh, 